My name is Aliyah Harriet with the Varsity Sports Show, and I am pleased to be joined by head coach of the Chandler girls basketball team, Coach AJ Greeno. Coach, thanks for joining the show today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. All right. So, um, being a basketball team, you know, a lot of the work starts in the preseason. Um, so, how has summer been going for the team? Summer league. How has that been going? Uh, it went really, really well. We're, we're, this is my uh, staff's kind of first full year here. So uh, the summer before, I was hired right before. So last year, hired right in May, where our summer was kind of chaotic. Um, didn't really get a chance to get to know a lot of the feeder schools really well, stuff like that. So this was kind of like, I tell people, this is our first real full off season to prepare and stuff like that. And we had a great turnout. We had um, a full uh, fre incoming freshman team. We had a full JV team, we had a full varsity team, got some really good games, got some really good experience in. So I'm really looking forward to it. We have a great senior class this year as well that were really committed all summer and stuff. So, so we really, we were really able to build um, kind of where my vision of the program, um, I see it going. We were really able to build on that over the summer. And then this fall, um, we have a basketball class. So we have a lot of those kids. We have a, a nice group of 18, income, uh, not incoming, but freshmen that haven't played any varsity, uh, any uh, high school basketball yet. So we have them in class, getting them geared up and ready too. So it's been a really, really good off season, but uh, a lot of work to still be done. Uh, that's really cool that you guys have a basketball class. I would, I would have loved to have that right? <laughs> back in high school. Um, that being said, how did your first year go? How did you enjoy it? It was great. Um, I really didn't know what to expect because the year uh, before that, that I took over, um, we were a two win team, but it was COVID. Mm -hmm. So we had a reduced schedule. Um, uh, there was a coaching change from the previous regime to, to what I was bringing in. So I really had no idea. I saw some talent and I thought we could be pretty good, but, uh, but I was really trying to kind of trying to temper my expectations just to make sure that I wasn't, um, holding the kids to a higher level than what they were capable to achieve. But they, I was pleasantly surprised that the kids really um, exceeded my expectations. And we uh, were able to secure a, a home playing game, uh, won that game. And then we ran into Xavier, who was a premier region, one of the, the top team in premier, uh, played them for the third time and, and they got us pretty good at their place. But um, overall, it was, it was a great experience. Uh, it, it really opened my eyes to how competitive um, Chandler's region and just 6A um, girls basketball is here in the East Valley. A lot of my previous experience coaching girls was on the West side and um, not to slight any West side teams as phenomenal teams, obviously Valley Vista, um, Millennium, there's some really, really tough uh, West side teams, but man, this, uh, our, our region, the premier region, just the east side, it's just a different animal. There, there, there's competition where kids want to go to certain schools. There's talent up and down. And, and now that prep schools kind of disbanded, that talent's even being dispersed more. And, and a lot of the top teams just got richer. So, so it's, 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 it's a lot of competition out here. Um, and you mentioned that you guys made the playoffs last year, the 6A playoffs. How are you going to look to build um, off of that this upcoming season? So we, I'm really big in like just the process of, of building the team. So uh, I, everyone's goal obviously is to build a championship caliber program, but I don't believe that happens overnight unless you just get really lucky with a transfer here or there. Um, but I really want to build with the kids that we have coming in. So I think the process we have is we really want to build off of this really strong senior group. Last year we had three seniors. Um, and they were, they were a great group, but this year we have seven. And so I think our senior leadership and what they can do in terms of teaching the younger kids, uh, the really big freshman class we're bringing up and, and the kids that we've kind of had throughout the summer and bringing them into high school, I think our seniors can really pave the way and just start building the culture and start building that, just that championship mentality so that if it doesn't happen this year, that's okay. We're building, we're building, we're building until we're just stacking talented class on top of talented class. And that's where you start really reaping your rewards. So, so I really think that 
the playoffs is was a huge step last year because now it's going to ramp up expectations for this year. Whatever we do this year is going to ramp up expectations for the next class and then the next class and the next class. Yeah, but that sounds great. Um, so lastly, I know we mentioned it uh, before we started get it started um, that you're from like the New England area. So I just want to ask yes. you what Celtics players, I assume that you're a Celtics fan. Uh, what what Celtics fan? What Celtics players? Excuse me. Did you watch growing up? So I grew up. I was born. I don't want to age myself here, but I was born in '79, which is Bird's rookie year. So I grew up with the Bird Celtics, and then had some uh, lean years with the uh, the the Antoine Walker, the Paul Pierce, early Paul Pierce Celtics, and then kind of really uh, got me got me satisfied when they won the title in 09 versus the Lakers, stuff like that. So that was great. But um, I think, uh, I think in terms of just my favorite Celtics, I don't want to give the generic answer of, of Larry Bird, but it's actually going to be a guy that never got to play. He passed away. Uh, Len Bias was a, uh, was a guy that was drafted and he died um, tragically two days after the draft. But um, if you look at any highlights or clips of him, he was kind of LeBron James 15 years before LeBron James was even a name. Yeah. Um, he was 6'9". He was, uh, he was a powerful, like, power forward slash small forward. Great athlete. I mean, I th think he was just as athletic as Michael Jordan. There's actually a lot of clips he played at Maryland uh, when he went against Michael Jordan. So uh, one of my more obscure players that I would love to have seen his whole career would be Len Bias. But uh, honestly, my favorite player for the for the Celtics would probably be Kevin Garnett. Oh, I, I, I love KG when they got him and just his effort, his passion. Um, he's so loyal to the Boston era. I think he only played there for three, four years, but he's so loyal. I and mean, even now, he just loves the Boston area. Has nothing but great things to say about the the city and the franchise. Just, just a great ambassador, and, and I just really respect the way he played and carried himself. So yeah, that's awesome. I'm I, I'm along that train as well. Um, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, that whole mm -hmm. era right there. Um, and then this last question is kind of on the coaching side. So like, yeah. what coaches in women's basketball, could be college, professional, have you like looked up to, or what are some of your favorite women's basketball coaches? Man, uh, there's so many, and and there's so many coaches on the women's side that just that just are brilliant basketball minds that unfortunately a lot of kind of casual fans would never give them their respect and put them up with a with a coach like a Popovich or a, um, a Dean Smith or Coach K but uh, Tara Vanderveer over at uh, Stanford's just phenomenal um, Pat Summit at Tennessee was just remarkable um, uh, Gino Ariema at UConn, that's, that's kind of a given, but some of the younger coaches love Becky Hammond. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of the season, everyone was saying that the Aces lost Liz Gambage and that they weren't going to really do much. I'm like, I'm like no, man. They're, I, I told everyone, I was like, they're my favorites to win the WNBA title. I was yeah. like, Becky Hammond's legit. And everyone kept saying, well, it takes more than a coach to win at the pro levels. Like, oh, I was like, you have the right coach surrounded by the right talent and the buy-in. I mean, that could, that could be everything. Look at them now. They're just rolling. I don't, yeah. I don't see, I don't see them. I don't see them not sweeping the sun. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I think it's, I think it's a wrap the way that uh, Chelsea Gray's playing Asia Wilson, those guys and the way uh, Plum played last game and then Becky Hammond putting it all together. It, it's just, it's just amazing to watch. And um, I think it's really a matter of time before we do see, one of these top female coaches coaching their own NBA team. Uh, I think Becky Hammond could be one of those front runners. I mean, she's proven now that she could step in year one to a, to a program that lost some, some talent and just, just really maximize everything that players can do on the court and uh, kind of revitalize careers. And no one was really talking about Chelsea Gray until this year. And now she's, People are talking about it like she's uh, CP3, and she's play, she's playing great. So, so I, I really think that um, uh, some of these coaches that are just just uh, uh, doing it on the women's side. I mean, it's just a matter of time before people can't not give them their due and stuff like that. And, and it, it's phenomenal. So, I, so I, I'm really loving all of it. Yeah, I was watching the game last night, and some of the shots that Gray was making was just insane. I was like, "There's no way," and she's just it's just. 
it's it's insane. <laughs> There's no words for it. She's a big time player. She's not afraid of the moment, and she's uh, super tough. But the thing that really sticks out to me is just you. You said you're from the East Coast. It's just she has that really gritty East Coast feel to her yeah. game. And she's so New fun York. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Just 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 punching people in the mouth and that swagger and stuff. And and you have and you have to have that being a being a point guard but playing in the pros as well. But I mean, just point guards in general, you could tell the special ones that really have that swagger and just believe in themselves and, and do what's best for the team, so. All right, that's all I have for you today, Coach. But thank you so much for joining the show. Um, again, I'm with Coach AJ Greeno of the Chandler women's basketball team. Coach, good luck this season. I'm really looking forward to watching you guys.